Hey guys, welcome to another, well I guess it's a repair slash service video. We're doing transmission service, replacing the filter, which is also called the strainer. Someone's pulling up. And the transmission fluid, we're doing a drain and fill, but we're also removing the oil pan and working on an 07 Toyota 4Runner with the V8 engine rear wheel only rear wheel drive two wheel drive only guys so this is this is going to be easier because uh, some of the exhaust is not going to be in the way that's it everything else is the same what I'm going to do though I'm not going to use some special equipment whatnot to measure the temperature of the transmission while I am but I'm going to also compare the temperature with your average Joe laser thermometer okay can you see this there you go you're at 70 degrees right now the camera is 70 70 68 okay so we're going to use this and an actual scanner that can read the transmission's temperature compare the two because remember we had to keep the temperature transmission temperature at 115 to one th the temperature numbers are right there on the ceiling temperature between 115 and 130 that's what it says on the ceiling anyways yeah that's what we're doing all right we're gonna drain i am actually kind of halfway through the job and then i thought hey i should record it so this is it okay guys so we are underneath the car this is the fill plug this is a t55 torx bit okay this guy this guy lives on top of the transmission driver's side rear right over here and you have well in my case I got plenty of room to put a, an extension with a ratchet and just undo this undo this plug first then you're gonna want to drain this is a 14 mil drain the fluid make sure the trans transmission is hot more fluid will come out don't worry about this guy you can loosen this up and tighten back up just finger tighten for now you're gonna loosen this up catch the oil catch it in a measurable container or not up to you i drained one two two and a half two and a quarter quarts then after you drain it remove all the 10 mil bolts besides two side ones so, so you can see i left this one on and this one on then you're going to want to loosen these a little bit just a few threads and then break the gas get loose so the pump or the pump the pan looks like this it's a bit wobbly and this is where i stopped and decided to record this so we're going to move on take this off okay guys we're going to attempt to remove this pan without spilling the fluid this should be easy because the fluid is you know mostly drained some of it is going to still be there i imagine maybe a quart quart of a quart quarter of a quart here we go Ooh. oh one thing i can tell you that, that this this oil is black i don't think this was ever changed okay just realized i don't have a pen hand me something man huh hand me uh what i don't know <laughs> oh, okay. oh whoa almost dropped it oh okay a box Okay, use a cardboard box to catch the rest of the fluids. Make sure you're not prepared. All right. We, can, we actually have a half a quart. We are missed the, missed the box entirely. Okay, guys. So this is the filter slash strainer. As you can see, it's got four 10 mil bolts. We're gonna yank this off, put a new one in. I don't need to clean anything. Look at this, this is super clean where the gasket used to be. It came off with the pan. Guys, I try to aim where, you know. You know what I'm doing. Yeah, I can see that. If you, want to, if you want to check the state of the oil, grab a 
white piece of paper. Instructions are best for installing a rear, rear hitch or wiring. Just dump it in and look, look, this is supposed to be somewhat clear or reddish. This is black, this is bad. Okay, I'm glad I, I'm changing, I'm doing this. Rubber gasket, man, look, it's just 135,000 miles on this. If this was here in the Midwest, then this all, all of it would be rusty. I want to dump this out somewhere. Okay, my uh, cameraman is, is fresh. It's first first day on the job. <laughs> Anyways, look look here, guys. Two things I want to show you. Clean these magnets up. Look at these shavings. This is not bad, actually. This is normal. But take them out, clean them up. Where's that where it's supposed to catch the shavings? Shavings, yes. Should be four magnets. Okay, we're gonna get to them later. And check this out. So this is your check plug, right? It's a straw. It's basically a straw. That's the plug. And here you have the straw. It's not removable. On some Toyotas, some V6 four-cylinder engines, this these are removable anyways. This is a V8. So this, as you fill this in from the top, right, from about right over here, uh, actually, no, it depends like this. So right over here, you're going to fill this up, and with the hot transmission at, what, 115, 120 degrees, you're going to start overfilling, and this is why it overfills. When, you, when it overfills, it, the oil comes out through this straw, so the level is up right over here. So this... Make sure you don't overfill it, but you know, obviously you got to make sure that this plug is open when you re refill it and at temperature. All right, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, install the new gasket over here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take those four bolts, take the filter out. Actually, I'm talking. The pen is not talking. I'm talking. It's still film. I got to send you to some train camera training boot camp. No, I'm just showing them all your. Pointing whatever you were pointing. I'm oh, okay. okay. Sure oh, yeah, you're right. Same. Okay, never mind. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> was it? Was it? Oh yeah. Let's let's do the filter right now. Since I got a camera. On it. All right. This in the case. Well, what's this? Oh, make sure you lose some parts. Did I take that? I took something off. I didn't have to. All right. We're gonna look at it later. So don't do what I just did. There's gonna be a lot of edi editing. In I think I got some fluid in my <laughs> eye. Ah, it burns. All right, we're losing both left and right. All right, the cardboard. I gotta say, it's doing a great job. You glad I gave you that box? Oh. <laughs> All right. There is. Make sure you got rags. Oh, there's the bolt. Okay. Oh. All right. So this is the filter strainer. You probably is it too dark for you? No. Okay. There is a gasket or an O-ring, I should say, right over here. Make sure you take that out. Okay. Make sure you take this out. Check it. Okay. You should get a new one with the new filter that you got. Double make sure, triple make sure, you have one on the new filter and this is empty. Triple make sure? Triple quadruple. What is that, fucking Chinese? No swearing on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> quadruple, double. And this is what I just lost. In case you, you lose this, uh, <laughs> let's figure. In case you take this out, I think it went... Well, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe it's some weight reduction. Yeah, it's extra parts. You don't need it. Yeah, okay. We'll figure it out later. This looks original. Okay, I'm going to clean this up. Be back. Next day. Things escalated quickly. Made a mess. Took something I didn't... Oh, I didn't have to. 
had to go back luckily I'm recording this I had to go back because <laughs> I wasn't sure and look through the video and see what I, um, you know how it goes back together then last the little gasket not gasket you know washer for the check plug couldn't find it too many cold snacks then I figured I found something some a copper washer uh, almost fits should work now I do admit I did not buy any new washers for the drain plug fill plug and all that stuff the fill plug gets a rubber seal the drain plug gets a, a washer that's still there and the check plug gets a washer next time I'll be prepared I'm gonna get new ones from Toyota all right guys we continue this is what the pen should look like before install squeaky clean clean magnets and all that stuff okay guys so this is this is the guy that i took out this bolt just went to town on those 10 mil bolts and just took this off the filter bolt is right next to it so this mechanism fell off that's for the shifter pretty self-explanatory just use common sense two parts this is separate from this but I did went back on the video to make sure all right so we're gonna slap on the filter make sure that that o-ring is there and that's it okay so I got me I got me a Wix can you see this this is a Wix 58136 made in Taiwan now we all know Wix is probably the best if it comes to filters here's the box and I got me a six pack of ATF by Valvoline now I know some of you are like why is this guy not using Toyota fluid you know, and transmission is going to go bad and all that stuff. Well, this stuff is also good. And I know, I know I'm going to be mixing it, but I do intend to do this after a thousand miles, another thousand miles, and so on. Because that fluid in there is bad. So, and this is cheaper. It's still very good stuff. A lot of people use it with no issues. Went through all kinds of reviews, you know, spoke with some people that have been running this exact oil or fluid in their Toyotas for thousands, tens of thousands of miles and no issues reported. So that's what I'm going with. Hate all you want, comment, whatever. I don't care. Do what you want to do. Use what you want to use. This is what I'm doing. This is my choice. As you can see, the o-ring is on the filter. This is nice and clean. And I take a little bit of the ATF and just put it on the gasket. And just pop this in. I was hoping it was going to kind of pop, but it didn't, but it looks like it did go in, so, okay, make sure it's all the way up, flush with the body over there, over here, and then put the bolts in. Okay, what I've done, I did not glue the gasket to the top of the pan. I'm just gonna try my luck and install it with it just lying on top. Oh wow, check this out. So this is even better, look. The 
holes <laughs> in the gasket are so tight that the bolts will actually stay. So I'm just gonna go put a few through or maybe even all of them. Check this out guys. See all the bolts? This is nice. Okay, so you saw me start on the threads. I'm gonna tighten them up, torque them down. I'm gonna find out what the torque is, and I'm gonna refill it. All right, guys, so these 10 mil bolts on the transmission pen are torqued to 65 inch pounds. 65, that's like, that's nothing. I did kind of tighten them up a little bit already. You know, grab my ratchet like this and uh, made them, didn't really make them tight, but I'm afraid this is 65 is so little that I might have made it too tight. Let's see. And remember, this is a rubber gasket. You don't want to over tighten. Let's see if I was too tight. No, okay. Not even close. I'm just gonna go around and keep going around until I reach the 65, kind of doing it in a two step. I want to tighten up one bolt all the way to 65 when the others are not even close. So, okay, so this is boring. So, I'm gonna just keep going round and round until I get 65. Okay guys, it takes a while, but you don't wanna just go around once, get it to 65, because as you go around, the bolt that you just torqued down to 65, is gonna torque down again to 65. So you, you saw me, once I got the 65, I went around twice, and I still tighten up a little bit. Okay, so we're done. Over here, let's make sure our plugs are tight. I want to kind of crush this, you know, foreign washer to this pen. And here is the o ring on the fill plug. It's solid, the rubber's soft, it's not torn. It's good. Why change it? You know? Okay, guys, this is my setup. I got three bottles ready to go. Now we did drain two and a quarter, two quarts and a quarter of a quart, and you know, some spilled, well, more than some, then some was draining overnight, then some more spilled, so I reckon two and a half, maybe two and three quarters, doesn't really matter, we're going to remove the check, roll of the transmission, remove the check plug, and check it properly, oh yeah, I should mention, at the beginning of the video, Make sure your car is level. You know, now that I look at it, the check plug is in the middle, smack in the middle of the pan, more or less. So if you think about it, if it's a bit, you know, one degree this way or this way, not gonna really matter that much because the transmission is way back um, of the vehicle. So like I said, you know, if it was on the edge of the car, which is it's never going to unless you got a Porsche, I guess, then it would have to be, you know, at zero level. But since it's more or less in the middle, you know, you can get away with an, I don't know, half an inch of a difference. I actually do have some half inch plywood on the other side of these posts, just to raise the, the back of the vehicle a little bit higher, because as this thing sits, the S of it is a little bit higher. So I didn't, and the frame is actually a little bit higher. So I went with how it sits on the ground and on its wheels, not how the frame is. So the frame is, as the car sits, the frame is a little bit 
angled up so that's how it is on the lift right now all right so i have this pump make sure the ends are clean hooked up to the battery uh obviously you know i mostly use this for transmission fluid this pump but there is i don't know what transmission fluid is in there left over from a service before i'm guessing it was also a toyota but i'm just gonna run some through it run some fluid through the pump That should be good. Okay, sorry for the darkness, but my main light just went out. Actually, now that I think about it, because the trans fluid expands when it gets hot, I should be able to fill it until it starts dripping from the check plug. Well, we're gonna take this out anyways, because it needs, needs, this check plug needs to be off when the car is running and you know warming up or when you check the fluid all right again i apologize if you can't see but this, i'm limited on room over here so if we're gonna if, if i were to fill this up right now until the fluid comes out out of the check plug once the transmission is hot it should come out even more but uh, i'm just gonna go ahead and put in you know the, the two and a half quarts i did the whole three well almost I'm sure there's something left on the bottom because I forgot I did the radiator replaced on the radiator a few days ago and you know some of the fluid came out out of the radiator obviously I guess if you are removing well we're gonna check if more of this fluid is gonna come out once the once the transmission is is hot well that's the fill plug what am I doing I'm gonna block that off all right, I'm going to clean up, install all the plugs, warm this up. I'm going to compare the temperatures with a laser on the pen, you know, pointing the laser at the pen and the actual scanner. So I've been trying to put the fill plug back in and, you know, some, some of the things these engineers come up with is just, phew, look at this. Can you see the fill plug? You see how it's about to cross thread? And you see why? Because this metal bracket is in the way. This part here. Why? Why make that so big? And I've been trying to put that back in for the past five minutes. You know, I mean, look at this. This is just in the way. It's not damaged or anything, it's not bent, it's just how it is. How the hell? I'm gonna have to maybe try and bend this up, get a, get a long pry bar. Because this just will not go in. Just dumb. Alright guys, just got it started. It's about 60 inside here 60 degrees about 50 outside but that doesn't matter let's see what this thing says 73.7 can you see this 80 maybe there's two separate sensors and 78 okay very similar i should mention once you started go through the gears a few times all of them uh, you know, three, two, low, drive, neutral, park, all of them reverse a few times. And I just found some info drain and refill capacity is up to three quarts. According to all data, right here, quart, three quarts. That's exactly what we put in. All right, let's check the temperatures again. Scanner says 87.1. Pen says 86.4 and we got no leaks which is good now I'm looking through forums and stuff my old data won't tell me what temperature exactly we need but I got two answers either between 104 Fahrenheit and 113 or between 115 to 130 
No, no. But if we get to 114, should be good. All right, guys. So according to your type of transmission, year of the vehicle, whatever you got, even if you're doing a Tacoma or Sequoia with the same transmission, you're, you're either going to have like about 100 to 150, 13 degrees uh, or 100 and 115 to about 130, even 33. But we're going to aim for about 113, 12, you know, kind of try and meet in the middle. So let's check those temperatures again on the pan. 99.5. All right, 102, 101. Okay, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. We are at 110, almost 111 on both sensors. Now I've noticed something. Check this out. If I look at the end, measure the temperature at the end of the pan, it's 101, 102. And as I go towards the engine, it goes up. And this is right by the bell housing. We are at 112. So 110 right in the middle, right right by the check plug. It's actually what 114. It kind of differs 111 so I guess I'd say it's pretty accurate okay if you just go on the point this laser at the middle of the pen let's see what it is on the side 125 look at the, all the difference yeah so right down bottom of the pen 113 112 I think we are good to check. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Remember, the harder this gets, the more fluid should come out. Nothing is coming out. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna leave it off. I'm gonna do my setup again and put more fluid in it. Okay, we're still at 113. Scanner says 115. Especially pretty dirty fluid. Okay. I was way low. 115 on the 112 on the pan, 115 on the scanner, so we're good. I'm gonna let it drip for a little bit. But man, I need to change this again. Alright, so you want a little drip. Hopefully you can see this. That's when you know you're good on the level. Wow, you saw how many, how many quarts it took. This makes me think that it, you know, the fluid was changed at some point, or maybe a lot of it, more than I thought, came out out of the radiator, or it actually stayed in the old radiator, which is right here. And it took so much, let's see how many it took. So I put, originally I put three in, and we are left with one, two more empty bottles, and another half. So it took five and a half. Okay, but that doesn't really matter if you're not doing the radiator. You know, you're most likely just put it in three quarts. But still, man, I don't know. If, I mean, I saw how dirty that oil still is after we put in so many, you know, I don't know what the capacity is. I'm guessing 12 of the whole transmission. But I'm no, I'm no longer, my next service I'm not going to be removing the pan and you know change, changing the filter and all that. Just drain and fill. It's going to be much quicker, easier. But I do want to drive on it for a little bit. 
see how it shifts and all and do this probably another two three times until I'm happy with the color of the fluid now you could just visit a shop have them hook up a special machine and do a proper flush all of the fluid old fluid would come out as the new fluid comes in I'm guessing maybe $250 maybe $300 depends what fluid you use obviously I think the service maybe calls for maybe two hours I'm guessing so nowadays it's probably $200 and the fluid, what is it, 15, 20 bucks a pop? I forgot what I paid for the Valvoline. Much less than original Toyota, you know, the WS fluid. Anyways, guys, this is it. You technically don't, people, a lot of people say you don't ever need to replace the, the filter strainer. I do. I mean, mine was filthy. I did another one on, on my BMW, which I don't have anymore. It was also nasty. It was grayish on the inside. It's supposed to be white. So I don't know. You know, there is no fluids for life. You know, oil, uh, oils for life or filters for life. Yeah, yeah, it, they are for the life of the transmission until it breaks. Yeah, they're correct there. But if you do change on those, obviously your stuff should will last longer, right? obviously if this helps you out do me a favor subscribe like the video dislike it comment just do something see you later